start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be here, and we, Lord, are so happy to fellowship with our church family in any opportunity we get. And we're so thankful, Lord, that our doors here are always open for us to come in and to do so. Thank you for the beautiful weather. Thank you for the opportunity that we have to still live in a free country. Watch over, guide, and direct us. Keep all of our church family safe and in contact. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, we'll jump into it real quick tonight. Uh, there's just, Jeff and I was just talking. Everything's accelerating again. I mean, this has happened before. Uh, things of this nature, uh, worldwide. You know, I was asking, uh, I forget who it was now, Maybe it was at the men's gathering Monday night. What's the best source of intelligence that we have? If you want to know what's going on and you're trying to figure things out, it's history. And it's like you hear the pastor say quite often, there's nothing new under the sun. It's just recurring. And that's true. And it, before in some of our Bible studies, we've talked about how God works in circles. He, God likes to complete things, and he, he, he does complete things. And it's really funny when you watch so much of what he does is in a circular motion. Some, excuse me, sometimes it takes quite a while for that circle to get completed, but sometimes it doesn't. But anyhow, if you want, to, you want to understand, really, then the best intelligence we have is look at history and what you're seeing now on a worldwide basis, the reason I bring that up is very similar to what happened in the late 1930s prior to World War II, where you started seeing countries form alliances, and that's exactly what's going on right now. You've got basically uh, Russia, China, India, is, is getting to be part of that. Iran uh, are the biggies that in North Korea. They are working together. There's no doubt about it. And they're, they're forming kind of a Warsaw Pact that if you, if you want to look what the similarities are, go back prior to World War II and look at what the Warsaw Pact was. And of course, back then it was Italy and Germany and the countries that uh, worked with them. So. You're seeing the same thing now, and this is getting stronger and stronger on a daily basis because of the things that's happening, and some of the things we'll mention here in a minute. I first wanted to point out, though, one of the big things that happened this last week, you may not have caught both Biden and the Prime Minister of Israel, Lapid, stood up in the UN and called for a two-state solution. Now, it's funny because I think it was three weeks ago I've mentioned in here, I couldn't understand why all of a sudden it seemed like Israel and the United States were kissing and making up. Because ever since Biden come into office, he's been anti-Israel. And they've been at odds. And all of a sudden that went quiet here about a month ago. All of a sudden there was just, there was nothing that you could see where the United States and Israel was bumping heads. Now you know why. Evidently, the U.S. had pressured Lapid uh, which is, he's going into elections this fall and probably will not be elected. But uh, Israel's going to have their, their elections again and be, what, the fifth time in the last two and a half years. Um, so, but anyhow, they both stood up in the UN and called for a two-state solution. Why is that important? Scripture tells us, God says in the Old Testament, those that divide Israel, I will divide you. So... You know, you, you don't know if that's straight to us or not, but it very well could be. But it's a big deal that both the Prime Minister of Israel and the United States is calling for a two-state solution in the UN. Uh, the other thing in the Mideast, uh, it's getting hotter uh, as far as conflict goes. Uh, Iran uh, through Iraq, of course, they've taken over Afghanistan now, and they'd like to take all of Iraq over. And what's going on there, the people have had enough of this. There have been huge protests in Iran, and it's all uh, focused around the government Gestapo, which really the Iraqi army is. 
they killed a young woman for not wearing her haji. Is that the right pronunciation? She didn't have her covering on. She had it on, she didn't have it on right. She didn't cover herself completely. She ended up being killed. And the people uh, poured out in the streets. There's been a huge protest in Iran. You're not seeing anything on the news on this, I'll guarantee you. Everything that's coming out is coming out through uh, other than news means. But that spilled over into Iraq. And in fact, today, uh, some of the Iranian drones that's in Iraq was launched at uh, military, our military camps that we still have in Iraq. They shot them down before they got in. But uh, they're just, Iran's pushing the buttons, pushing the buttons. And they're probably gonna push them harder if they think their people are rising up against them, which they are. So we know that Iran's been one of the fastest growing Christian communities in the world. You've heard uh, Bishop talk about that. And uh, it's a fact. And you still have the Kurds, which are uh, in the one northeast region uh, that are, uh, are friendly to us. And there's a lot of battles going on between them and the Kurds and what few Christians there are along the borders that's left. But uh, uh, Christianity is live and well in that part of the country. And these people are starting to pour out in the streets and really starting to, to kick up. Why is that important? Normally in regimes like you have in Iran, if they feel, and the same thing happens in China, if they think they're getting threatened by the people, a good way to calm that down is go to war with someone. And that puts the people on the back burner. So it just increases the pressure, increases the possibility that something bad could come out of everything that's going on over there in a short period of time. I uh, just mentioned China a little bit. That's really gone quiet. And the reason being, uh, there was a, that summit that uh, Putin and China and North Korea was part of that. Iran was involved in that. Uh, they, all of a sudden, when he come back to the country, Xi Jinping come back to the country, he disappeared. And there was even some talk, some chatter on some of the news, uh, not news, but chatter on the people in China that's able to get information out that there was actually a military coup taking place because they canceled all the airplanes at one time. They shut all the air traffic down for a while. That went on for about a day. But nothing else has come out of that. As they, they are so good at closing stuff up and keeping it quiet. They do an excellent job. But uh, something obviously has been going on over there or is going on. To show you how <clears throat> things happen, our Vice President Kamala Harris, she went to Japan this past week. Uh, on her, just before she got over there, North Korea fired an ICBM out into the ocean. Uh, just, to, just as a warning shot over the bow, we're still here, we, want, we know you're coming, and yeah, we can launch a missile. So little things like that, this tit and tat stuff is, is what really raises the, the heat on the boiling pot as this stuff boils up. But right now, I really, there's not much coming out of China. I will mention China again here in a few minutes because China has decided to weaponize drugs, specifically fentanyl. And we'll be talking about that here in a few minutes. Let's go to Europe. Lots have happened over there like this last few days. I know you've probably heard some of it. Uh, you may not have caught on that Melanoni, the first lady, was elected prime minister of Italy. Never, hap never had a lady before. The interesting thing about Prime Minister Melanoni is that she is a Christian. She's anti-abortion. She's anti-gay. And uh, she, she's a strict conservative. So... That's a big deal in, in the liberal Europe, because see, they're part of the EU. And I thought it was interesting, within hours of the time that she was announced as the president or the prime minister of Italy, one of the French ministers stood up, prime ministers, stood up and said, this is what they said, this is a quote, we will be vigilant 
in watching for the human rights violations that may occur in Italy. Now, what do they consider human rights violations? Number one is abortion. If you try to control abortion, that's a human right violation in their, in their eyes. So they're watching that. She, she's anti-abortion. Of course, she's, you know, the Catholics over there still have a great deal of power. And the, the, it's kind of like what happened in Italy. It's kind of like what happened here with Trump. Uh, the conservative side started standing up and making waves, and they've elected her. And it's going to be interesting to see what comes out of, uh, of her government. But I thought it was equally interesting that France, real quick, was to say, hey, we're watching you. And, it, and it's back to this thing, EU's in trouble. Um, it's the country, there are several of the countries that are starting to balk and wish that they had followed Britain's call and, and with Brexit. And of course, you know, Great Britain removed themselves from the EU common, common thing and uh, common government. And uh, there are several of the other company, countries that are starting to look and to do the same thing. They've, they've had kind of enough of the European government, the Euro government. The big thing that happened over there in just the last few days, how many of you heard about the pipeline explosion? Yeah. Yeah. That's biggie. The gas lines that go, there's gas lines that come out of Russia and run on the floor seabed of the Baltic Ocean and come back up on the, on the western side of the Baltic. And that's where the gas has been coming from Russia into Europe. Well, somebody blew them up this week. The interesting thing is, Pastor sent me a, a text, and I had not watched what you had sent me yet, Pastor, when it came, and it was really interesting. I've read some more on it since. United States is possible culprit in this. Uh, they'll never prove it, but um, Russia is treating it as international sabotage, which obviously, it, it, okay, here's the thing. Some of the Europeans are saying Russia blew it up to put pre you know, more pressure on. Russia is saying we didn't blow it up. And really, it, didn't, it wouldn't make sense for Russia to do that because my understanding is I read some about it this afternoon. When those pipelines were, it wasn't just a leak. Uh, they thought it was just a leak to begin with, but both of them got blown up. And actually, it even registered, uh, they had some... Uh, seismic activity registered that centered about the same time on both of these pipelines. When the seawater, when they were blown up, if they just had a leak, they could go down and repair the leak. You know, like you had a, a seam come loose and they had to weld it or whatever, that can be repaired. This cannot be repaired, and in fact, when the seawater entered the, entered the pipelines, they are ruined. They cannot be used again. And that's multi-billion dollar operation that's, that's no longer usable. So there's going to be some replications come out of this. One that's already occurred, Gazprom, which is Russia's um, oil company. It's a state-owned oil company. They shut down the rest of the gas going to Europe today. There's other pipelines, smaller operations that gas flows over into Europe. Russia shut everything down today. And these people are, you know, we, we've had a little cool weather the last few days. Anybody felt a little chill when you get up, go outside in the mornings? Well, they're feeling it over there. And they're going to feel it real hard real quick because winter comes early in some part, so many parts of that over there. Um, it, it gets cold, gets cold quick, and in the cold can be severe. And these people are not prepared. A good example of what's going on, what this causes, German inflation is out of control right now. We think we've got inflation here. It is nothing compared to what's going on in Germany right now. And the main thing that's driving that is the fact that the energy problems that they have. Uh, the government's going to try to keep fuel affordable for the people to keep them warm. Same thing is going on in Britain. The only problem is it's kind of like what we do here. They just, they're just printing more money. 
And that's why the inflation uh, on a worldwide basis is no ways under control at all. It's out of control and it's going to get much, much worse. Prime example of that is FedEx. I don't, I don't think, well, I wasn't here last week, so I know I didn't mention that. FedEx stock dropped quite a bit last week. The reason being, FedEx said, hey, there's a worldwide recession coming and we're not going to be shipping as much stuff. We know that. We're already cutting people, we're cutting routes, and we're not going to make market. They had, you know, their expectations out. Of course, you know, FedEx is a stock-owned company, so they're telling their investors, say, hey, here's what we think we're going to do this next year. They threw it out the window. There's no way that they're going to make the income that they had forecast because they're cutting back. Um, another example of that is, I don't know where I mentioned that in here or not, week four last, Walmart, um, Kohl's, and uh, what was the other one, Heather, that I mentioned? Um, who? Target. Yeah, Target. They all are cut billions of dollars of orders, canceled them. They know what's on the horizon. So it's just showing you that don't believe what you're being told here, that inflation's under control. Things are going to be okay as far as the economy goes and, and we're going on. It's not going to be okay. Uh, we're going to weather through it. We've, we've been through this stuff before. But uh, more and more financial uh, forecasters are coming out and really throwing red flags up. And most of this is driven by the fact that the governments are trying to keep their people happy. And uh, you just can't do it. They can't print enough money to do that. The, um, I mentioned German inflation is out of control. That's about it on European side. Let's talk about here at home a little bit. Uh, what are we gonna do first here? Biden's making, trying to make, Biden and the Democrats are trying to make the election all about abortion. Their only hope of getting, of maintaining control this year on the elections will be to get a lot of women out voting and they they're hawking this abortion issue biden made it made a statement this week he, he was at a i forget where he was at but he was making a speech and he's saying folks listen uh mike's not working that went red uh what what he's saying it what he was saying was hey look all we have to do is elect two senators. That's what he, he was promoting. And he says it's all about abortion. We've got to maintain our ability to abort. And to do so, we've got to elect two senators. And what they're afraid of, they, I think they've, they've, they've seen the handwriting on the wall. The House of Representatives is lost unless something amazing happens in the next four or five weeks. They've lost the House. They think they can still control the Senate, but uh, even that's looking pretty shaky for them. So they're really pushing to keep two senators. That way, Biden at least has one House that he can count on that's still Democratic instead of fighting Republicans on both sides of the House and the Senate. Fentanyl, I mentioned that a while ago. This is a figure that just shocked me. Um, is it working? It went, yeah, there it comes. Come back green. Okay, we'll try it again. Uh, last year, now stop and think about this figure. They confiscated, this is just what they got, 2.5 billion doses of fentanyl. Now stop and think about that. Two and a half billion doses is what the, our drug interceptions accounted for. That figure just blows me away. Fentanyl, and the, and which is causing almost all the overdoses, is the leading cause of death now for 18 to 45 year olds. Number one cause of death in the United States, 18 to 45 year olds, is drugs. Think about that. 
That's why I mentioned a while ago, China knows and understands this. And that's why China's working with the drug cartels in Mexico. The drug cartels have basically taken over Mexico. They are fully in charge. The government has, is almost totally powerless to do, well, the, I'll put it this way. Right now, the government of Mexico is totally powerless to do anything as far as controlling the cartels and the drug trade. And of course, the cartels, they're making a lot of money over shipping these migrants up here too. The government can do nothing. China is shipping the drugs to the cartels in Mexico. Cartels are bringing it into the States. China has weaponized fentanyl, knowing what it's doing, as we said right here, the core of our, our group, our core of our population, 18 to 45 year olds, it's now the number one death. So they're doing a really good job of destroying us from within on that. Talking about the detainees, there was a text, or a, yeah, it was a text or a message that was uh, uncovered this last week. You're, two things you're really, is really interesting right now you're seeing because the Biden's been in office long enough that they're able to go at, back and do the Freedom of Information Act request, which takes one, one and a half to two years to get your information. If you today, today decided to request legally freedom of information which they have to give to you it's going to take you a year and a half two years to get it well that stuff's starting to come to surface uh, you're seeing quite a bit of it on some of this trump stuff you're seeing a lot of it on the uh, results from the drug companies on the vaccines how messed up that is well they had a foai on Biden on de detainees. He instructed our Border Patrol to detain 50% less than what they were. So it's no accident what's coming across the border. And, then, and this, this right here, this isn't speculation. This, they actually have this, te this message, this email, of where Biden instructed them you start right now, and he did that as soon as he came into office. He told him, you know, tr tr from the previous, or previous administration, they were trying to do the, you know, they were doing a better job, there's no doubt about that, figures show that. He told them, as of today, you will detain 50% less than what you were. So stop and think about that. Um, Talking about the vaccines, talking, let's talk a little bit about Christian um, persecution, which we're told is going to increase and increase, and man, is it, it's taken place. The DOD, Department of Defense, here again, this was stuff that has been requested from Freedom of Information and is surfacing. They, they didn't give a lot of exemptions for vaccines to begin with none of the services because the Biden administration wouldn't go allow it. Their goal was they was going to have everybody vaccinated and if you didn't get vaccinated, you had to get out. There were people that put in exempt for exemptions and there were some granted, but here's the kicker. The Department of Defense by a, a multiple, I think of about 10, gave 10 more exemptions to non-Christians than they did people that were Christians requesting vaccine exemption. Because the Christians were requesting a vaccine exemption due to their religion. Didn't want to use aborted fetus, didn't want to use a vaccine that had aborted fetuses as the base. Had a problem with that, don't want to take it. Well, you'd had a much better chance if you'd use some other reasons, what amounts to about tenfold increase. So, and then I think this has been on the news quite a bit. You probably all heard about the FBI coming in on the minister. Yeah, uh, this guy was had, a year ago had been out in front of abortion clinic trying to urge people not to go into the clinic. Had his 12 year old son with him. This, this is based on the facts as I read them right now. Had his 12-year-old boy with him. 
Well, some 72-year-old guy, I guess, was harassing this boy. And this dad got in his face. They got in each other's face, that's obvious. Well, somehow or other, the guy went to go around the man to get to his son or something, and this pastor pushed him. Guy fell down. Had some minor abrasion or something, didn't mount to anything. Well, the local district attorney and the local police showed up, said there's nothing here to, to arrest him by for. District attorney looked into it and said, it's not here. We're, you know, we're dropping, we're dropping everything. There's not going to be any charges. Six days later, after the DA said that there's nothing there, FBI shows up at this guy's house. Conflicting reports anywhere from 15 to 25 FBI agents armed with assault weapons, knocks on his door, takes him away in shackles in front of his kids, scares the dickens out of his kids, arrests this guy in his, in his house. Additionally, I learned, this guy had already said, hey, if you guys want me to come in, I'll come in. But the, the, it, it's all about intimidation. And it's all about intimidation of a Christian that's trying to stop someone from killing babies. So don't kid yourself. This stuff's going on. And the interesting thing is, they, had, um, they were asking the, uh, the Attorney General about this. And the big question is this. this is, they've got multiple cases of the DOJ going after someone that's been involved with trying to keep people from going into abortion clinics. But there's been over 90 now resource centers that are Christian based for people to go, women to go to if they need help so they don't have to have an abortion that have been far bombed, destroyed, graffiti, everything. There are zero investigations or cases going on from the Department of Justice to investigate what's going on against the parenthoods that are Christian based. So it, it, it's obvious, folks. I mean, it, it just, uh, it, but it's going to get worse. We know that. I'll end with the other one here. How many of you picked up on the first Christian church in Texas that had drag queen bingo for their kids? Now, folks, this is a Christian church. All right? They have a drag queen bingo and the whole purpose of it was they're trying to draw in, this is their quotes, they, are, they support the LBGT and this is their way of trying to draw more of them in to their congregation. So they had a drag queen bingo for the kids. And the interesting thing was down there that uh, some of the Texas good old boys showed up and uh, they had a little protest going on at the same time. Cops had to stand in between things down there for a while. Nothing got out of hand, but uh, it was good that somebody, you know, said, hey, enough of this is enough. We're going to see more of that, and as we do, there's going to be more and more conflict. So just, we just got to be prepared for it. And uh, as we were talking here before, uh, the... Birth pains, you know, we're told are going to come closer and closer and closer and go get more severe. So things are heating up. Things are happening more quickly. It's, it's really amazing uh, to me. I, say, I know I say it every week, but every week is a little quicker, Bishop. I mean, every week it's faster. And there's, there's just no doubt about it. If you haven't been paying attention, the other thing that's happened more rapidly and getting bigger and bigger are earthquakes. Uh, they are uh, they're happening more and more often. You're getting a lot of 7-0 and bigger earthquakes around the world now. The other thing, if we talk about weather, um, that hurricane I mentioned to Heather earlier last night, I, I was looking at that, and there's a guy on TV that I, or on YouTube I watch quite a bit, and he said, they're forecasting this thing all wrong. See, they were forecasting a cat Category 1 storm 
that was going to become a tropical storm and come up beside Tampa, and the worst thing was going to be just some coastal flooding in Tampa. Well, it went from a Cat 1 tropical storm to a Cat 4, almost a Cat 5, before it hit landfall today in a very, very short period of time, quicker and stronger. So these things, all these things are going to occur, and we just have to be prepared. And, and uh, the big the only question I'll leave you with tonight um, is you got to remember this is harvest time. And the, there's souls that are going to be lost, gone forever. And don't be the blame. <laughs>